everybody, today I'm going to be talking about my induction story. So I was induced early, I was induced at 37 plus 5 days and it was unexpected, it wasn't a booked thing, I didn't have kind of ongoing medical problems, I'd had a few reduced movements but that was it. So on Tuesday the 20th of January I went into the hospital again for reduced movements just to have a check although someone had said to me before that um, when your baby is preparing well, your body is preparing to go into labour, your baby's movements will slow down um, because they're just saving their energy up to obviously go through birth and delivery. So when someone told me this, I kind of checked it out and that is a really old wives tale. It's not true. Baby's movements should never really slow down. You should have a continuous pattern that you monitor. So I rang the hospital and they asked me to come in. They sent me up to the delivery suite and they sent me for a growth scan. So at my growth scan, the sonographer said to me, right, I'm just gonna get a doctor come in and just kind of check that what I'm seeing is what I'm seeing. He wouldn't tell me what, he just went and got her. So my heart absolutely sank to the bottom of my stomach. I was really nervous. I didn't know what the doctor was going to say. I kind of feared for the worst. So she, the sonographer brought a doctor in and she looked at my baby as well, sat me down and said, look, right, we're gonna induce you early. So I thought, okay then, so I'll go home, get my stuff ready, let Tom know because he was in London at the time working and we'll come in tomorrow, we'll come in the next day and I'll be booked in for an induction. So I said that to her and she was like, no, no, that's not the case. Unfortunately, we are going to have to induce you today. It's kind of now is the best time for us to do it. We're slightly concerned because it looks like your baby has got the cord wrapped around her neck and obviously that's slowing down anything um, from the placenta getting into her body. So that was very, very scary. And I remember saying to the doctor, I remember being like, oh, um, well, I can't be induced today because I've got washing that needs to be done. And I got chicken out of the freezer this morning. And she kind of looked at me like, I know you're in shock, but it's time now. It's time to induce you and get you going. So I was induced that evening at 3 p.m. So I went to hospital at 11 a.m. and I was induced by 3 p.m. Tom was at the hospital with me when this happened. So they started me off with a pessary left that in for 12 hours and came back, checked me, wasn't dilating, wasn't contracting, so they left it in again for another 12 hours, same again, came back, checked me, I was only 2 centimetres dilated and for them to be able to break your water you need to be 2.5 or 3 centimetres, ideally you know something more than 3 centimetres, so they said to me right, we'll leave your body to rest for 6 hours, give it a bit more time and then if nothing kind of progresses we're going to use the gel and then after that your body should start to just naturally dilate and then your water should break or will break them for you. So they came back after six hours, it was 9pm and they, they found that I had actually dilated. I was 3.5 centimetres? Yeah, I was 3.5 centimetres dilated. So they took me to, well they didn't take me up actually for 12 hours. They said to me they were going to take me up to the delivery suite within the next hour didn't actually take me up until the following Thursday afternoon. So at 3 p.m. they took me up. I had my waters broken and still wasn't really contracting the way that I should be, wasn't dilating the way that I should be. So they were kind of getting a bit concerned that it was taking so much time because they ideally wanted her out as soon as possible. So they did put me on the hormone drip, which I was really disappointed about because I wanted, ideally, if I wasn't induced, a really natural water birth, gas and air, no epidural, really serene, candles going, nice music, which is the complete opposite of what I had. So the hormone drip, I don't I don't know the exact percentage, I think it's like 80% or 90% of women have an epidural with it because it really brings on your contractions thick and fast and very painful. So she said to me, right, we'll get the epidural ready and when you want it, just let us know. So as, I, as far as I was concerned, I was getting the epidural, they were getting it ready and they would bring it into me. That wasn't the case, it got to 9pm and I kind of said, oh, is the epidural coming soon? She was like, oh, so you do want it? And I was like, yeah, I'm kind of really in lots of pain here, the gas and air isn't doing anything. So she rang the anaesthetist, anaesthetist, anaesthetist on one, they rang the person that does the epidural and um, they said, oh, there's two people in front of you, so you're going to have to wait. And I remember screaming at this lady going, I can't wait any longer, I'm in so much pain. And she, I did have to wait in the end, obviously. So by the time the anaesthetist got to us, it was 10pm. So they set it all up, 
put it in. I didn't, I was in so much pain that it didn't really bother me. I just wanted to get out of the pain that I was feeling from the contractions. So the needle, although I've got a big phobia of them, didn't bother me. I couldn't see it. So that's fine. Tom was holding my hand. My mum had to leave the room because she didn't want me to see, you know, to see me go through it. So that was fine. I got it put in. By half ten, it hadn't done anything. I was still having pain. So she said to top me up, and if that doesn't work, then maybe he had put it in wrong. So it got to 10 to 11, and I was still feeling pain. I said to her, I know, I, I feel like I need to push. And she was like, don't be silly, you were only 3.5 or 4 centimetres dilated when I last checked you. There's no way you've gone to 10 centimetres that quickly. I was like, please just check me, because I, I feel like I need to push. And she checked me, and lo and behold, I was ready to push. I was 10 centimetres dilated, and she could actually already see Isla's head. So my body just been doing the natural thing, just kind of pushing her down. So she said to me, right, it's time to push. And I remember going to her, am I going to meet my baby? And she was like, yep, it's time to meet your baby. So that was a good 10 minutes of pushing, maybe 15. By 11pm, she was in my arms. So I had skin to skin, Tom cut the cord. It was all, it's all a bit of a blur really, because I ended up getting quite ill afterwards. I was shaking, I was being sick. Um, I didn't feel well at all I couldn't get out of the bed because the epidural was still obviously in my system so it took me a good I think it was a like half an hour 45 minutes to actually get out and go to the toilet which I really needed to do they wouldn't let me leave because they didn't have time basically you're meant to have a cannula a cannula no what's it called they meant to put something inside you for the we I can't remember what it's called I think it might it's not a cannula a catheter that's it a catheter they're meant to put a catheter in and because I dilated so quickly, they didn't actually have time to do that. So they wouldn't let me leave the delivery suite to the ward until I'd gone for the toilet. But obviously I couldn't stand up. So that was that was a bit annoying. So I was on the ward until 2pm, at 2am even. And then they gave me some food, gave me some liquids. And Isla was all settled and asleep in the little, you know, the see-through crib they give you. And yeah, Tom went home. And I was just left there with her, which was probably the scariest thing. Just kind of sitting there, looking over at this tiny baby that I'd just given birth to and thinking, oh God, what do I do when she wakes up? What do I do when she starts screaming and crying? And But it came pretty naturally, thankfully. So thank you for watching this video. If you like it, give it a thumbs up. And also subscribe to Channel Mum. Thank you. Bye.